Hi everyone, today is Monday, February 8th, 2016, and this is our second to the last meeting with our facilitators before our official kickoff to our MOOC. It's our um, open education, what are we calling it? Um, I don't even remember anymore. It used to be the open adult basic education, uh, something there or another MOOC. But, uh, it is now the Instructional Design Service course, Gain <laughs> Experience for Good. Thank you, CN 1935. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, JR. Yay. We are just getting more official by, by the day. Um, but I want to just um, spend a little bit of time tonight going through... Um, you know what, I'm hearing a little bit of background. Let me make sure everybody's muted. We got a lot of folks on. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, mute everybody. But I think you should be able to just um, hop back on if you need or just let me know in the chat room if you want to. Um, I want to thank everybody. Um, as JR mentioned, I don't know how many folks were logged on at the time. We, we are at um, 625 people who have registered for our little course and uh, I thank everybody who's on this call and listening to the recording for making that happen this is really uh, really an exciting time as we gear up in these last two weeks before the class starts so um, thank you so so very much um, and here you go here's the official uh, uh, roll call um, we had 488 last time we spoke so um, quite a nice little jump in the last two weeks and I would imagine we get a few more before things actually kick off um, on February 22nd. Um, so the agenda tonight is just to firm up some important dates, um, talk a little bit about the live sessions that we've tentatively um, planned, and tonight if we could um, add a little more clarity to those, what we want to talk about during those live sessions, and then um, get some dates on the calendar. Uh, talk a little bit about how folks are um, coming to terms with the uh, Canvas access, if you've had the opportunity to log in and if things are working well there. Um, add some definition to what our facilitator and SMEs roles will be once the MOOC kicks off. Um, and then as it cracks me up every time to talk about homework for you guys, but um, just some things that I'd like everybody to think about in the next um, uh, couple weeks before our last live session that we have before the MOOC begins. So with that, um, I think I muted everybody. Let me unmute everybody um, and just ask if anybody has any questions at this point before we kick off. Is there anything that has come up since the last time we met that you wanted to bring up before we jump into it? Um, I do, Jennifer. Do you, can you hear me? I can. Please. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, hi, this is Kia. You know, once yeah, I've checked into Canvas and because I've had an uh, account there, it wasn't a problem. I think you've seen me in there, right? Have you? I, just, I did. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. So when I log in, I it just tells me that the course will start whenever. Um, I, I kind of like, maybe that's what we're going to do tonight is to figure out what our roles are going to be, how we're going to be logging, you know, all of that, the details of the facilitation, yeah? Sure, absolutely. Yep, that's uh, that's definitely on the agenda. And are you having trouble? Because I, when I um, was playing around with the login, for a while, I was just logging in as a student, and it wasn't allowing to me me to see the course. But can you see the course at this point? Uh, I haven't been there in like a few, four or five days. But uh, the last time, it, it seemed like the first time I went in, I was a student. But the second time, I see more menu options. It's definitely not like my the Canvas course that I taught for uh, Saint Leo. But it's uh, but that's just because how we designed it and. Okay. But I'm hoping that I have no way of knowing that I'm the instructor or facilitator. However, you're the one on record. I know it shows me that, but, you know, it doesn't give me anything for me to grasp on on my role. So I don't know if it's something you can do or. Okay. Yeah. Version Perfect. Yeah, you know, we'll do a quick little tour, too, when, when we get there, and that, that'll help. Um, like you said, there's so many options in Canvas, and so it may be, as you're saying, I structured the menu a little bit differently than you've had it, um, right. and it'll, uh, let's do that. Let's totally do that when, uh, when we get moving on. Um, anybody else have any questions? Okay, well, let's jump right into it, and, and we'll definitely get to, um, to what you were mentioning. So some important dates, uh, if everybody could please put on your calendar, you know, I'm going to mute again, or I'm getting some feedback, so one second, let me mute everybody again. Um, there we go. 
Um, so if we could get everybody to mark your calendars for Thursday, February 18th, that will be our last formal meeting with this group before the MOOC starts. And then once we do put everything into gear on the 22nd, um, I'll be responsible for every week sending out a blast to everybody, all the uh, 600 or however many participants we have at that point. And so once you see that, that will be the official kickoff to the MOOC. Um, it'll co go out probably Sunday night, um, going into that Monday on the 22nd, and um, that'll be our first kickoff. And um, if, if at that point then, when you're um, logged on to Canvas, it will be really important then that we all jump into the introduction um, introductory form. There's an introduction form, and I'll show you when we go through the walkthrough what I'm talking about there. Um, and then also if we could get some dates on the calendar in terms of live sessions, and I'm just proposing these as potential dates. Um, I know we talked a little bit before about having some ad hoc when things uh, made sense, but I wanted to add a little bit maybe uh, more clarity to that in terms of dates and who might be hosting things. So what I was thinking the kickoff week would be that first week of the, the 22nd, I was thinking of having something on the 25th. Um, and then uh, on module two, four, and six, um, on the 10th of March, I think would be a nice time to start talking about some of the topics that come um, come around in uh, um, week two and three, or not week, I'm sorry, module two and three, which is when they start thinking about um, looking at OER that they would be interested in using, um, aligning their modules to specific standards, and starting to get into thinking about what their initial um, uh, activities, instructional activities and strategies will be. And so that would kind of take us through that March 10th time frame. And um, then getting into March 4th, which is when they'll start designing their prototypes. And then, um, or not March 6th, I'm sorry, March 31st, which is module four. And then um, module six around the 28th of April is when they'll, we'll start doing the, um, the evaluation. So I'm going to unmute again. I know it gets a little hairy to hear things, um, but how do those dates sound and how does it sound to you guys to have these four, they'll be optional to the participants, um, but we will have, I'm envisioning having a small panel of us facilitators and SMEs um, in a Google Hangout, um, which will be a Hangout on air. So we would be speaking a group of no more than 10 people, I think is what they're capped at, and then it will be streamed out for others to then be able to ask their questions. So let me, um, let me unmute then and have anybody ask any any feedback on that? And I have I'm noted there to JR and John. That just happens to fall when you guys are um, involved in the facilitation. We'll talk about that in a later. Um, what I, what I mean by the facil facilitation of those weeks. But how how does that sound to you guys as far as dates? And then specifically to JR and John, would you guys mind helping me um, co-host these sessions? Jennifer, I'm good on the um, 31st to help host. Um, and I think that you've broken this out really, really well. I think those are good timing to have those. Um, after that module two and that module four, I think, I think that works out really well. But I'm more than happy to be involved on the 31st. And JR, does that work on the 10th? On uh, March 10th? Okay, and, um, and again, everybody's certainly uh, invited and, and, and certainly wanted to have everybody involved and those that can be around. Um, my thought processes are Thursdays. Again, Thursdays tend to be the dates, and again, I know we're working in multiple time zones and not everybody even is in the United States. We've got people all across the globe, um, but we will record them and we'll post them on in Canvas so those that can't be there will be able to hear things. But um, what I'm envisioning these will be is we'll have the opportunity or give everyone the opportunity to ask questions either in the Ask a Subject Matter Expert Forum within Canvas um, or within Google Hangouts on Air. People are also able to post questions. There's a little module plug-in within Google Hangouts on Air and allow people to do that. And then we'd be able to respond to questions um, during these sessions. What is the time uh, timings on these uh, dates uh, for the live sessions? Well, I guess I wanted to talk about that too. Uh, again, I, 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 kind of, I kind of am resisting the world according to Jennifer, but at the same time, I'm kind of making it the world according to Jennifer. But my thought was Thursday nights at the same time, seven o'clock central. Um, does that work out pretty much? It seems to have worked out work out pretty well for us facilitators. And and like I said, we we aren't going to be able to hit everybody. Some people will be in the middle of the night that are taking the the course. So you kind of have to just pick a time and and then record it for those that can't meet. 
So if these, you know, unless somebody has a really firm um, objection to what I'm saying, I think, we're, well, let's go ahead with these four dates that I have sketched out here. It would be the same time we meet on these sessions, which would be 7 o'clock p.m. Central. And um, I'm in Las Vegas on the first date. So what, what time zone is Las Vegas? Is it the same? Is it? Is it I think it's mountain, I think. Mountain, right? So, okay. I, th I think it might be. I think it, it might be. be yeah. An hour or before. Uh, so that would be, know. yeah. yeah. The time zones are just so. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> if it's I know. seven for you, then it must be six for them because it's yeah. eight. Just wants to talk. Yeah. Oh God, let's change this. Okay. I'm talking the late day. She just asked me to the question. Okay. Okay, and so let's talk a little bit about Canvas access. Um, and maybe in the chat room, if people could give me a, a sense, has everybody been able to log in? If you could just give me a yes or no in the text chat, that would be great. Okay, in there now. Okay, very good, very good. And um, what I wanted to talk about um, when we're done um, on this slide is talking about how to update your profile within Canvas. And this may get to some of the comments that um, uh, KM was mentioning before as far as di differentiating us from the students. And part of that comes through is, is making sure your profile's up to date and how people can reach you outside of Canvas, whether that be on LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever it may be. And so we'll talk a little bit about how to do that. Um, and as I mentioned in prior sessions, please don't edit, edit anything in Canvas. It's fairly locked down except for the discussion forums. I think you would be able to tweak some things and certainly you can get into the settings, which please don't. Um, I just kind of want to give you a word of caution. If you click on settings, you have actually literally the ability to to delete the course, which would be a, obviously a very bad thing. <laughs> I do have backups made, but I don't even want to go down that path of thinking what that may be. Um, so you know, do please be careful as you go in and, and you're touching things within Canvas. Um, if it's a button you're not familiar with, uh, please leave it alone and uh, send me an email if something looks weird. So in terms of quality control and giving me feedback, um, please, as you're going through, look for goofs and clunky parts or things that look weird and feel free to send me an email. Or conversely, if you have more things that you wanna talk about or look at, um, the designers use the SurveyMonkey form, um, so you can see it listed here. Um, surveymonkey.com slash r slash open abe 16 and it's basically a feedback survey so feel free to use that if you're interested in um, offering more comprehensive feedback on your modules that you're looking at so i mentioned a moment ago talking about the um, canvas profile uh, if you go into your account which is you can see me here over on the left you where you wherever your picture is it'll say account click on that it'll open up a menu that gives you the chance to change your profile so click on profile and then what, what we, would be nice is if everybody had ways for people to be contacted. Again, this is supposed to be a networking experience, getting to know people um, beyond this experience. So if you have a Twitter account, if you have a LinkedIn account, you can go into manage your registered services, which would include Twitter, I think, and Facebook and LinkedIn and change those settings. You can also add your bio. Maybe you have a website that you want to po post um, that would point people to where they can uh, interact with you again outside of Canvas. Um, so this is, again, just in the spirit of reaching out, you reach out the larger community of instructional designers and educators. I'm just letting know, people know how they can, uh, can find you outside of this class. And um, I think I'm just going to leave that part alone. Did anybody have any questions as far as what they've done in Canvas so far? Anything that looked broken or um, I'm going to unmute again so it might get a little unruly here. But did anybody have any problems with Canvas so far? Okay, nothing. Okay, looks good. Okay, I'm going to mute everybody again. Feel free to say something in the text chat if you need the mic or whatever. So here are our facilitators. This is just going back through our roll call from before and our SMEs. So we've got a full team of 16 at this point. We have JNR, JR and I reached out to one other person. She hasn't gotten back to us yet, um, but she's actually a, a, a community college educator and an expert in um, OER as well as an expert in adult education. And so we thought we could maybe reach out to her and get a cold call invite to her, but she hasn't responded back. So hopefully we can um, circle back with her and maybe possibly add one more SME to our, um, to our mix. I don't know, JR, she didn't reach out to you, did she? I, did, I have not heard from her yet. 
Um, yeah, not yet either. Okay, so now let's get into the nuts and bolts of the facilitation. Um, I talked to John about this earlier in the week, um, actually la later part of last week, uh, kind of my idea of how, how I'm envisioning now that we know we are for sure having hundreds of people join our MOOC. It's one thing to like have a hypothetical number, but now that we actually do have the 620 some. So here's how I'm envisioning it. Let's, let's pretend we're taking our group from San Francisco to New York. And we've got this blue line that goes through the United States. And along the way, we've got these pit stops. So we've got uh, module one has uh, content that's going to help them reach their goals to, to get to, to a New York. Same with module two, three, four, five, and six. So we know how MOOCs are. Nobody behaves in a similar fashion. So someone is probably, they're going to, there's going to be a large group of people that just beelines it from point A to B and doesn't do half of the things or even a, a, poor, a small portion of the things that we have planned for them in the modules. They'll just want to get their hands dirty and start cranking on these modules. And that's the nature of a MOOC. It's going to happen. But my idea and the idea that I think the designers had as we were going through that is we would like um, everybody, all of the participants, to make these pit stops along the way. So to do the assigned um, exercises and practice activities and discussion forums and individual reflections along the way. So rather than, originally we kind of kicked around an idea of somehow breaking down these 600 people so one facilitator would have a certain number of people and another facilitator would have another group of people. But that's just, again, the nature of the beast that, that really doesn't work because some people may not even stick with us past the first week and others may require a lot more attention and whatever it may be. So and instead, we're kind of working on this idea of a pit stop, a pit stop. And so what we need to make sure happens at each of these pit stops is that we have a small team of facilitators and SMEs who are responsible for making sure people get in and out of their pit stop um, appropriately with the uh, and questions answered and they, they know what their direction is and they're ready to move on down the highway to the next, um, to the next pit stop. And so that's where I came up with this um, discussion moderation schedule, which I, I think you have seen in an email. Hopefully um, you saw it from a, a prior email last week. So if you look at, let's use for an example, um, let's look at the discussion M1, your learners, uh, so that we, we an anticipate that most of our, oh, thank you, JR, for putting that in there. We anticipate that most of our participants will be at module one between um, February 29th and March 6th. That's the goal based on the due dates we have set for the for the learners and the participants. And so at this point, um, John was the designer of that section, so it made sense that he would be the facilitator lead for the M1 discussion. And then we have SMEs, what I'm calling quote, on call, which would be Heather and Annalise, who would be there backing up John to answer any subject matter related questions associated with the adult basic education subject matter, they would be there to support him. Um, and then moving on, M2 starts on March 7th through the 13th. That'll again be the peak time that we expect most people to be at module two. Um, however, again, we may have some some that are speeding get there faster and some that are driving a little slower and will get there a little slower uh, and so on and so forth that takes us through um, to the end of the course. And um, so I have just arbitrarily put people in there based on where I'm getting a sense people are most interested based on our prior meetings. For example, um, Camille has um, expressed some interest on the module three, which is actually getting into the nuts and bolts of designing the instructional experience. Same with um, uh, Kay has mentioned she was interested in that. Lisa um, Lisi mentioned she was as well. And then so on, as people have kind of given me a hint of where they're more interested in spending their time. So let's talk about this just a little bit. I'm going to stop talking and unmute and, um, and just take, field some questions on this chart that I have pulled up right now. So again, we don't have a set schedule. We're saying to everybody in the class, you have to be at module three by March 21st, but we have due dates where we're hoping people will complete the assignments as they've been laid out in the course by that rough time, time frame. Um, so let me unmute. So let me un Your credit card is here if you're looking for it. Oops, I'm hearing somebody get in there. So how does, it, does this make sense to folks, what I'm talking about as far as this idea of pit stops and that you'll be responsible for this discussion forum um, with, with a partner and with a subject matter expert? 
Can you clarify the um, the subject matter expert role in the sense of because it says on call, so does that mean that we should wait until we see something d explicitly directed toward us, or does it mean that we're just part of the that module? We should be lurking and then kind of jump in where we feel like we could provide some clarity or support. More to the second part of what you said. Yeah, so if you're assigned that week, if you could just jump in and as you see things, um, address them. And then as, as far as the on-call, like there, there's also a forum called Ask a Subject Matter Expert. And so it's outside of our like, assignment, but it's more when people have a, a specific question about um, their project. It doesn't necessarily fit neatly within one of the discussion forums. They may ask, they may go to that forum and ask a subject matter expert. So if it's the week that you're assigned to one of the other modules, I consider you kind of on call then to also address the Ask a Subject Matter Expert um, forum as well. So does that make sense? Amanda, does that answer your um, question? I think so. Oh, it doesn't completely though? Okay. <laughs> I, I, I would need to think about it and process a little bit. If I have questions, I'll ask. <laughs> okay. Thank but, you. But, um, but certainly, um, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, I don't want to um, preclude anyone from chiming in on a discussion that they're not a discussion leader or they're not one of the subject matter experts. So, for example, if um, Amanda on week one, someone make, makes a comment in that first discussion forum for the module one, certainly jump in there and, and add your two cents. Um, but in, I, I would really appreciate, though, if it is your assigned week, for example, Heather and Annalise on the module one, in every day with that forum and, and really you you and John or Heather and Annalise and John are responsible for making sure that that module flows and that everybody's ready to move on to the next one. So questions are answered and conversations are happening that need to happen. Um, and maybe if I flip over to here, this may add a little bit more clarity. So I did have a slide here that kind of lays out what I'm thinking in, about in terms of what this role will look like. So um, as I've said a couple times, you're, you're moderating that assigned forum, you're on call for making sure that anything that appears in that uh, Ask a Subject Matter Expert forum gets answered. And then for the facilitator's role, it's really the eyes and ears of that forum. So making sure once a day you're checking in, you're looking for um, any questions that may have popped up. And then as needed, it's, there's going to be that peak period of activity. There's going to be like a bubble where like, it's like a snake, I guess. You can think of it when they're eating, whatever. So there's going to be a, a bunch of people coming to your discussion forum, and then it's going to slowly fade away as people move on, the bulk of the people move on to the next um, uh, section and more activities as they kind of roll in through the, the course. Um, and so what I'm envisioning is people are going to um, have questions that you're going to be responding to, uh, maybe at giving links to resources or sharing it, comparing ideas. Um, and those are all the types of things that I would uh, like the discussion facilitators, the facilitator lead to make sure is happening. Um, and then in terms of what the SMEs are doing and getting to what you were saying, Amanda. I'm sorry, Jen. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm, it, the audio is breaking up a little bit. Could you mute the oh, lines, oh, please? Oh, yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thank you, JR. Sorry about that. Um, and so for the SMEs, it would be um, then, as I was saying before, um, making sure that on the assigned week that you're really getting in there, rolling up your sleeves and, and pitching in with a facilitator to make sure that the, the module that you're facilitating is, is getting done and then mo monitoring that ask a subject matter expert. Um, but it really, I really, my only hesitation in doing it this way was I didn't want folks to say, okay, it's not my week, so I'm not going to participate. Because I think the cool part of what we're doing is kind of having this continuity and, um, and making sure everybody's aware of what's happening. So certainly then, you know, being visible in other the other discussion forums is, you know, I think an equally important part of what you're doing. So if you are interested in what's happening in another module that's not yours, certainly chime in, add your two cents, share resources. If there's a pool of open educational resources, for example, that you're aware of that hasn't come up yet in the conversation, as one example, feel free to share it, if you, even though it's not your discussion that you're actually monitoring and, and facilitating. Um, so any questions on that? Are we... Let's see, I've got some questions. Let me just be on call. Yep, triage, yep. That's, I'm reading JR's question here. So to triage the questions. Yep, that's right. 
And so just to get to also what Kia was mentioning before as far as how things look. So when you go into Canvas, this is what you'll see on the left side. It's got um, home, announcements, assignments, the badges, design guide, files, modules, uh, and people over on the left-hand side. So if you click on assignments, you have a choice of either looking at it in terms of date or type. So as you see the arrow coming across there over on the right-hand side, it says type. If you go to type, you'll see where the discussions are. And so I've got, got them all laid out in Canvas and then also the due dates. And again, these are as hard a due dates as I, you can make within a MOOC. We're asking people to please, <laughs> please complete, complete these um, discussion forums by these due dates. But we all know the nature of a MOOC. We can't guarantee things will actually get done when we hope they will. Um, and so this is where you can click on and then read about what your discussion is all about. And then you can go into the, the module sections themselves to read the content that's associated with it. So I, I hate to do that. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to unmute everybody and just um, take a, a moment to ask any, anybody to ask any questions they may have about this. Because this is kind of the big deal part of tonight, making sure we all get a, a get pretty good sense of, of what the roles and responsibilities are for the facilitator. Yeah. So any questions on this part? And I'll ask some specific questions here. Is everybody good with the weeks that I've assigned them? So as John was saying, and you know, he'll, he'll be around. Are you guys going to be <laughs> physically <laughs> around? Or is there potentially might be on vacation or whatever it may be for the weeks that I've laid out here? OK, Betsy, it looks good. Felisa looks good. No vacation in sight. I'm with you on that one. OK. OK. Very good, and, and please feel free to interrupt me at any point if, um, or send me an email if, thing, if you don't want to talk tonight for whatever reason. Okay, I'm gonna mute everybody again. Okay. And so, and, uh, as I kind of touched on this before, you, so your other contributions that are pretty important, as we kick off the course, it's going to be really important that we has, you know, create this sense of community around what we're trying to do. So as much as possible, if you could involve yourself in that M1, which is the course introduction, or I'm sorry, M0, which is course introductions. Um, and uh, and uh, all, oh, I'm trying to read, sorry, let me go back to the text chat. There's some activity here. So you'll be unavailable on April 11th. Okay. Do I have you scheduled for that, Amanda, by the way? Let me go back here. I don't. Okay, yeah, we've got Amanda. And, oh, she is. Okay, Amanda, we'll have to work on that. I don't know how much of a problem it will be, um, but I just want to bring it up because if if we have that many, you know, depending on how many people mm -hmm. um, pull through to module five, yeah. I just don't want to leave anyone hanging. Okay, that's a good point. Let me think. Of, let me think today. Amanda and I are going to be down in Texas for a conference, the Coeb conference conference on April. I think it does it end on April. 11th or is that like right the, it ends on the 13th the 13th okay um and i'm actually there the whole time so okay so that'll okay we'll look into that okay that may, maybe potential maybe move some things around there okay very good all righty okay so as i mentioned please participate on the course introductions and then next week we'll talk or not next week in two weeks actually we'll talk about our, in our last meeting before the mooc starts we'll talk about how the prototype evaluations will be and how they'll run and as amanda kind of alluded to right now we have no idea how many people will be hanging with us by module six um, our all our goal has always been we'd start with 610 percent would finish so let's say for we have 60 people that are with us by module six um, we'll go through a round of um, formative evaluation of their prototypes, and that is something that I would like everybody who's uh, on the facilitation and SME team to help us um, participate in, and we'll talk more about the details of that next week. Um, okay, in the live sections we talked about. I mean, so any other, I, I kind of kind of leave this behind right now, unless anybody has any questions as far as roles, but um, I think, Kia, you're the one that brought this up before. How does this... Um, how does this sit with you? 
Um, look good. Yeah, I mean, uh, what you explained makes sense. And I did a print screen, saved every e each of the slides, just so I would have it as a handy reference uh, as I'm going through them. Instead of going to the Google, I know you'll post it, but it's it's just, I'm so visual. I need everything in my uh, <laughs> fingertips as I do this. So yeah, I think it'll be good. I just need to fiddle with it. Probably twenty seconds as I'm I'm in La I'm flying into Las Vegas that day. I just, Hope to remember to come in around, you know, sometime. Okay. Uh, that time, yeah. Um, and you know what I'm going to do real quick? I'm going to, I mentioned before when we started, I'm going to stop my screen share and actually share my um, uh, um, browser real quick. So can you guys now see my, um, can you see my browser? Yeah. The Canvas course? Right. Okay, very good. Okay, so you were mentioning before, and I'm going to go ahead and mute it. Oh, I like it. There we go. I've got it muted, so hopefully the audio is a little better. So this is what I see when I log on, and hopefully you see something similar. So the students won't see this gray, the gray box where it says discussion pages, quizzes, outcomes. That's, that doesn't appear to the students. And if you want to see what the students see, if you go under settings, which I'm clicking on here, you can click on student view. And then everything will show um, from what their perspective is. And so, um, let's see, is that, did that happen? Yeah, it should have, hopefully. Um, so let's just go through real, real quick. So when they click on home, uh, they're going to see uh, a welcome screen. Where do I begin? We're going to initially point them off to the Canvas user orientation, which will get them started with uh, updating their profiles and answering any questions they may have. And then um, asking them to start with module zero, let's get started. And um, they'll always be able, when they hit the home screen, to come back to this and they'll see this um, course content page where it shows where they can get a direct link to the diff, all the different modules, the seven modules. And as I mentioned before about the live webinars and recordings, so uh, we have the ability to embed the um, Google Hangouts on air directly within Canvas, which is what we'll do. And I set up a little dummy one here. Um, so I'm clicking again on the live webinars and recordings. So when we set the date for our first kickoff webinar, the students or the part MOOC, MOOC participants will come to this page. When they click on this, it will launch the live webinar, the stream of it. And once we have the, the, stream, the recording completed, the sessions completed, the recordings will go down here. Um, so that's how folks will find that. When people are progressing through the modules, they'll be able to click on the left modules bar and hopefully, why is this not showing as a student view? Hang on one second. This isn't the student view. Hang on one sec. I don't know why it's not in student mode. Hang on one sec. There we go. I think this should be, in, hopefully, yeah, we're in student's view. So you won't see this on your screen, which is unfortunate. I don't know why not. But as they pro progress through the module, the modules, they'll be able to see check marks where they've completed different things. So as they viewed pages or as they've completed and contributed to discussion forums, they will get check marks and they'll be able to um, watch their project uh, progress through the course. I don't know why it doesn't have that same feature for you as moderators. I've been playing around with that and it doesn't. Um, so sorry about that. I was hoping that as you read different pages and different screens, you could also have, have, be able to track your progress, but it doesn't work that way. So I don't know why. I didn't design it, sorry. Um, and then also um, they'll be able to click on this assignments tab and that will bring up the, um, there are two main things, uh, groupings of assignments for them, the class discussions, and then they also are doing individual reflections. And this isn't anything that we moderate, uh, or it will, it's not something you'll facilitate, rather it's, um, it's just a prompt that they will be doing individually. And it's actually part of John's, part of it is part of John's research that he's doing on personas. So they will just go to these, um, oh, let me see if I will open one up here, for example, under persona discovery. And here's the reflection instructions. And they're actually set up as like the surveys. If you're familiar with Canvas, we set them up as like a survey. So they click on it. Um, it'll come up with the, the question prompts. And uh, they've got text boxes to fill things in. 
and then when they're done, they submit the quiz and they turn in the individual um, submission. So again, this isn't necessarily something we're facilitating, so it's not really anything you guys are um, going to need to, to worry about. Um, it's just something that they're going to be doing as, as um, an exercise on their own as just a reflection activity for them to do. And then um, I think that's pretty much all. Did anybody else want me to go through any of the sections while we're here? Let me unmute everybody. Did anyone want me to go through any any of the sections while we're here? Where is the uh, the little um, ask the SME ask the whatever? Where, where did you put that? Okay, that's under um, right here under the chat help. Uh, yeah, up here. Yeah, can you see oh, that? Oh, here it is. That's right in front of me. Yeah, ask the subject matter expert. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So if they click on modules, they'll see all the pages in the course, starting with as you're mentioning the help and the chat forums. I've also added a peer-to-peer -peer chat. This is unmoderated. This is just for them to, I don't know, a water cooler, <laughs> just for that virtual water cooler for them just to post stuff to each other. They, they may or may not use it, but I usually put it there. And so um, Amanda's asking, where will those questions go? For the um, individual reflections, you mean? Amanda? Oh, ask the SMEs. That will just be um, a regular discussion forum. So let's go back to that real quick. Yeah, it's just a discussion forum. So the prompt is for that. Do you have a question about your project and want in input from a facilitator, a subject matter expert? Ask your question here. And so they'll be able to just click reply. And then they'll have a, a text box to be able to post their question. So those will be visible to everybody. OK. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody and go back to our screen here. So I think I'm pretty much done with what I wanted to talk about tonight and, and as I end every session kind of with this idea of homework. Um, please do spend some time going through Canvas and, and poking around. Um, update your profile, please, and, and then closely review the, the modules that are assigned to your um, associated with your assignment and um, and please do give me some feedback as you see things I, I as I go in I still find pretty um, <laughs> I'm amazed at the mistakes I'm still finding typos or whatever it may be or some link that's broken or whatever it may be I'm still finding things so please do forward those on to me as you see them and then for next time when we meet again in two weeks um, if we could uh, talk about the prototype evaluations and then really drill down on what we want to accomplish during those live sessions with the participants during the course. And then, um, as we talked about last time quite a bit, I think we still, uh, the pinch point we're going to have as the students are going through and working on their projects is they'll need help on coming up with instructional activities to do um, associated with their, with their lessons. And so as we are helping them as facilitators and mentors, if we could have in our bag of tricks. And I don't know, Camila, I don't know if you hear, you're here. We, I, I noticed those, that deck of cards that, <laughs> or whatever they're called, the battle cards. Unfortunately, they come at a big price. I thought, that for some reason, I was thinking yeah. those were kind of cheap, but they aren't, huh? No, they're not. And I spoke to the, I spoke to um, the people who make them in, in Poland. And they're willing to give discounts and all of that stuff, but it's still kind of hefty. Yeah. And they're interested in knowing what they need to support us mm -hmm. to be able to let people use the cards if need be. Okay. So, and so is the, have you used them before, Camille, when you're designing things? Yeah, I have. I have. They're, they're pretty handy because it's like mm -hmm. having all of the models, theories, methods, strategies at your hand. Yeah. At your fingertips. Yeah. And it's good when you're not knowledgeable as a novice. It builds your ability. Well, you know what? We were, I was laughing with JR about it. We're going to have to have the OER version of, yes. of the battle cards. We've got to create our own. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Amanda was asking, do you have the link to that again? We had it in the last chat room, but I don't know if you have it. I can send it. I'll put it in the chat room again. Okay. okay. All right. So, you know, I'm going to do a, an unmute for the last time. I'm pretty much done with the... Um, with everything, I'm going to do one last blast next week. Maybe we'll pick up a few more stragglers, but for the most part, I'm kind of done promoting the MOOC. I think we're we're at good a good capacity for what we wanted to set out. So that was my last slide for tonight. Did anybody have anything they wanted to bring up or talk about? 
I think making the cards is going to be a great idea uh, from our last week's discussion. It's we were so excited about having those cards. So if we can at least uh, make some that would be not similar. Make, let's make sure that they're not similar looking. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> purpose. Um, then I think that would be a great addition to the to the, you know, for the MOOC might generate for motivation even, you know, so they're not feeling as lost. Well, what yeah. about if we ask them to? Um, I could take pictures of some of the cards and send them there, and ask them to decide for, um, see if there are any cards that they think are missing. Ah, let me also hop over. Um... Because then, you know, then you don't infringe on the copyright yeah. <laughs> at all. And then um, you give them ability to think out of the box. Hang on one second. Let me pop over. So we can think about it. I think we have a couple of weeks. Yeah. And even if, here, let me show you within the course, Felice um, was responsible for the design. She did a nice job of laying this out uh, according to Merrill's first principles, which we've talked about before. And then we also have the Wikia thing, um, the framework. Um, but she did a nice job. It's in module three. So for each of the phases, can you guys see this? I think you should be able to see my browser, hopefully. Um, so for example, under the activation, if you click on this, um, when Felice was putting this together, she had an overview of what this principle is about, and then examples of instructional activities for activation, which I think very much aligns with what the battle cards are trying to do. Um, so for example, you know, brainstorming exercise or putting together a learning log or a quick talk or whatever it may be. And then within this module, they're, before they leave this act page about activation, they're ex asked to think about what types of learning activities they would do associated with that. Um, with that. And the same for as we move on from activation, um, looking at demonstration, and so giving examples of what presentations or I think the other one is um, sharing stories. Um, so the idea being totally to your point, um, Camille, is as they're coming up on these sections of the WAPIA framework, or if you think of it in terms of Merrill's first principles, that they have activities that they are building into their lessons that are associated with these phases of instruction. So, okay. Anything else before we sign off for the night? Good. Going once, going twice. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for everybody for joining us. I think, Thank I think you, we're Catherine. good. Okay. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you.